Uh, my name is Dagmar Bożek Andryszczak. I'm a specialist working in, at Edu Arctic Project at Institute of Geophysics Polish Academy of Sciences. And we are going to start with a short review that you were invited to fill in before our classes. The question was, is the academic style of writing for normal people? And as you can see, we have eight answers, which means that half of the answers are for no. So it means that academic style of writing is a little bit complicated to understand for regular people, but we today uh, will try to discuss it and show some pros and cons concerning the topic. Okay. So the first one is the name of the scientific project that is carried out, that was carried out, uh, or I'm sorry, that is still carrying out uh, in South Shetland Islands. It is the archipelago where the King George Island is located. It's, it is the Antarctic, the big territory in the southern hemisphere, which contains the continent of the Antarctica and the surrounded, surrounding islands, which means the King George Island as well. So just uh, pay attention to the title of the project. It is Variability of Antarctic Lehens Microbiome in a Trophic and Spatial Temporal Gradient. Whew, okay, that's full uh, title. I, ask, uh, I asked for it, my colleague, who is the employee of the Institute of uh, Biochemistry and Biophysics of Polish Academy of Sciences, and she sent me that. And uh, not only the description of that uh, scientific project, but also she added the commentary to that email, and it is an information from my colleague. The main point, research on cryophilic bacteria, which means the bacteria that can only live in a low temperatures. The end of the story. So it is the main point of whole of the description that, as, that I was given. And the length of the project description contain 383 words, as you can see. Of course, I'm not going to show you the full description of the, the project. So it means, and it is uh, the very <laughs> nice information for us, for the receivers, that even a very difficult to understand text, we can, we can um, convert into simple and understandable message. So let's have a look at the title of the project. So the variability of Antarctic Lehen microbiome in a trophic and spatial temporal gradient. So I underlined uh, three words that might be a little bit confused. So uh, just uh, try to somehow add some synonyms to that terms. For example, microbiome is a type of the habitat for the bacteria. And the gradient, trophic gradient, is uh, contained more or less within the food chain. So it's a little bit uh, much more understandable. So we need to transform it into the regular people speech. And the definition. The definition of the academic writing is we have uh, three, we have two options. The first one is a more wide definition. And it is kind of writing uh, which, is, uh, which aims to fulfill the requirement of a college of the, or the university. So those organizations are responsible for maintain the level of writing uh, in which the scientific papers are written, the first one. And the second definition uh, of the scientific academic writing is in a more narrow meaning which means that it is used for scientific publications. So those informations, 
those two type uh, pieces of information are very uh, basic and uh, contain the main point of the term, which is the academic write, type of writing. And what does it mean, scientific publication? For example, we have books, scientific books, of course. We have essays, research articles, academic journal, dissertations, and conference papers. Of course, there are only some examples, but we now we know what kind of publications we have written in the writing style we can call academic or scientific. We have a few styles of writing. Now I'm presenting you one of the theory of the styles of writing that was uh, prepared by a Polish linguist and philologists. But I think that many of that uh, styles you can find in many classifications written by some researchers not only from Poland. We have academic style of writing, which is our today's topic. We have administrative law style of writing. I hate it, to be honest. <laughs> I think many people have the problem with that. When you receive some documents and you have a really, you are in a big trouble to understand it somehow. We have religious style of writing, artistic one, journalistic, and the academic, which is, as I said, the main point of today's presentation. We have some subcategories like uh, in theoretical, practical, educational, and popular science. And popular science is our favorite because, uh, for example, in the Eduardic project, we mainly are focusing on it. We try to transform the academic style of speech, for example, of writing or writing into more understandable message. And as I said, the classification was uh, proposed uh, by Stanisław Gajda. It's uh, his uh, Polish philologist and a linguist. So a few styles of writing and the academic is one of them. Characteristics of academic writing, which are Purpose and the audience. Who is the receiver? Who is the? Uh, where is the audience of our message? And we need to ask a research question first before we start write something concerning our main research, for example. What is the aim of the article? What is the aim of the scientific paper, and so on? Precision. We need to be precise in giving data, in giving terms. Uh, some reference to the other sources. Objectivity. There is no the article in a. Um, we we are going to publish in a newspaper. We the aim is not to give an opinion, uh, to express our emotions. No, objectivity is one of the very important characteristic of the academic writing. Organization of the text. So we need to have a logical order. We uh, we will emphasize uh, that organization part in uh, oh, the next slide. Clarity. We need to be more precise, more uh, as more uh, as precise as we can, as as clear as we can. So it means that we need to present in a very easy and uh, understandable way our topic to our audience. And impersonality. Of course, we are an author of the scientific paper or we are in a group of many authors of the scientific paper, but very often it is um, rather formal style of writing. So it it's, that doesn't mean that we can use the form I, my, me. No, we rather choose the impersonality as a way of expressing our theories. Okay, so let's focus on some main points that uh, are very 
uh, that are typical to our style of writing, which is academic one. So the terms, the academic style of writing likes terms a lot. There is a quotation from one of the scientific paper of the Polish scientists, as you can see, and we have term, ground penetrating radar, and, in, uh, and we have the abbreviation as well. And it, in a such kind of context, we can't use synonyms, for example. We need to be very precise. We need to use it um, as uh, often as we can, not to confuse our audience. Impersonality. You can, here you can have the example of it. So, the thermal structure were studied. It doesn't mean that I was study, studying on the topic of something, but the topic were studied. Uh, in, and it, it's not important how many authors the publication, the scientific paper has. Impersonality uh, is a way of expressing our theories with, and it helps us to be more objective when we are ref when we are presenting our our research long sentences to be honest it's uh, very hard to to read to understand to remember but good information is that long sentences is not the very often phenomenon that is referring to the academic style of writing. Sometimes long sentences might occur, but not so often. I think that now there is a trend to avoid long sentences in the scientific papers. But sometimes we can uh, find such uh, examples like this one. As you can see, it's one sentence and the length is 59 words. There is a lot of data, there is um, much information concerning the topic, so of course it's very precise, but on the other hand, it is not easy to, to read it. The next point is, in a scientific style of writing, we rather avoid using verbs. Because the verb, the verbs are responsible for adding much more activity, dynam uh, activity to the message. It is more dynamic. Rather, the scientific style is that kind of style when we need to inform, we need to be formal, we need to clarify the topic. So the verbs, we use them only when they are needed, not to make the content more dynamic. Rather, nouns are more welcome. Macaronic language. Macaronic language is the type of speech when we, where we use a lot of foreign words. For example, uh, macaronic language is connected uh, at first with the Latin language, with the, which is the which is basic in a scientific type of writing. So here we have, for example, the Latin names of some species. To be more precise, the penguin species that are living in King George Island in Antarctic. Uh, but of course, the macaronic language might refer to the other languages. For example, in Polish, language when we have the, the scientific papers that are written in Polish. We have a lot of terms, a lot of phrases from Latin and from English. It's very typical. I think that in many European language, languages the situation is very common. The, the situation is very similar. So macaronic language uh, is connected with the using terms from the foreign language. Sometimes uh, it doesn't mean that it is a kind of fashion to be more uh, trendy and use uh, English terms in our publication, not. 
it's very often because of that the Engli English or Latin terms are more precise. And we use them because we don't have in our native language the terms that are referring to the topic we, we, we are writing about. Structure of, of writing. It is the slide that is um, additional info to the to the lo logic I was talking about uh, later uh, earlier in, in, the, in the very beginning of my presentation. So as you can see, uh, the scientific paper needs to have a logical order. So we have the introduction, very often concerning with the research topic, with the with the main question we asked ourselves what is the aim of our writing after that we have main body the conclusions and in the end we have abstract kind of summary for example if the scientific paper is written in polish the abstract will be in english uh, plus some keywords very often when we want to publish our scientific paper on a special online platforms for our researchers we need to add some additional information like the abstract for example or the keywords the keywords are ne needed to make the scientific paper more searchable uh, via the uh, via the internet and thanks to it uh, when we type special keywords and looking for a special special publications it is easier for us to find the topic we are uh, especially interested in. And there is the logical order. Uh, furthermore, we have the signaling words, which are type of linking words that join the some parts of our scientific papers. So it means that um, our audience is uh, guided, let's say, through the scientific paper when we use some phrases like on the one hand, on the other hand, it means that there is the logical order of our publication and it is more clear to the audience. Quoting. We are referring to the other resources, to the other uh, research, researchers, uh, topics, themes, and so on. And it means that our paper is more objective. So uh, we have many ways of uh, using quotations in our scientific papers. It might be, of course, uh, quoting, the typical quoting, but also the paraphrasing, summarizing, or synthesizing. It's also a way of mentioning about other resources, other topics. And here you have the examples of the Harvard style of cita uh, citation of the quotation, which means that the quoting quotes are included into the text, the main body of the text. So we don't need to look in the end uh, of the paper or in the uh, in the in the bottom of the paper to look for additional information, but they are they are in the text in the body of the text, so it's easier. Uh, the Harvard uh, style of quoting is used very often in the scientific papers from STEM branches from some math, uh, sciences, biology, and so on. It's uh, more precise. And the other type is the Oxford uh, quote, style of quoting. And it is uh, used for the scientific paper from such branches like history, some uh, foreign languages, and so on. So it depends on the type of the science, what kind of uh, quotations we use. Okay, so here you have some reference. If you will have uh, any questions concerning that, uh, I can send you. There is a interesting uh, guide concerning the academic style of writing 
that was written by University of Leeds and I will send it to you afterwards because it is written in a very simple and clear language how to prepare a scientific paper, what kind of vocabulary terms we can use, what kind of phrases. So I think that uh, might be useful for you. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for the participation. If you will have any question, I'm here for a couple of minutes. So you can ask me now via chat or using the video as you can, as you wish. Or you can, of course, use my email address that is given here after our classes.